When Ali became the fourth caliph, his sons Hassan and Hussein were in attendance to learn from and assist their father, and also stood up beside him in three battles. Ali ultimately was assassinated by a group of misguided people known as the Khawarij. After his death, Hassan Ali's older son and the Prophet's older grandson was given the oath of allegiance by the people of Kufa and Arab. Simultaneously, Ma'awiyah was given the oath of allegiance by the people of Syria. For the first time in Islamic history, two caliphates presided at once. When Hassan and Ma'awiyah were posed to return to battle again, Hassan resigned after six months and moved to Medina as he disliked fighting and bloodshed. He resigned for the sake of unity, despite the fact that he stood as the more righteous and qualified caliphate candidate. Hassan swore allegiance to Ma'awiyah, pledging to listen to and obey him, providing that he ruled according to the Book of Allah and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad. There followed in the wake of his allegiance 20 years of peace. Hassan fulfilled the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad when he stated, Indeed, the son of mine is a chief. Allah shall bring peace between two Muslim parties through his hands. Note our Prophet referred to both of these armies as Muslims in faith. Hassan later passed away. Then as the death of the current Caliph Ma'awiyah loomed imminent, he appointed his son Yazid to succeed him. This despite the fact that Hussein, the Prophet's younger grandson, was more righteous and overall more qualified to become the Caliph. The governor of Medina called Hussein to his house and insisted that he give the oath of allegiance in public. Hussein repeatedly refused. The people of Kufa barraged Hussein with letters asking him to appear before them so they could swear allegiance, acknowledging him instead as their ruler and the next caliph. They promised to support him. In response, Hussein sent his cousin out amongst the people on a scouting mission, curious to see if the people of Kufa were serious in their intent. Later his cousin wrote a letter to Hussein summoning him to come immediately as the tribes of Kufa sent 12,000 people, each person representing a tribe, to offer their oath of allegiance. Wise men who loved Hussein begged him not to go, but Hussein insisted. And when he arrived at Karbala, his followers abandoned him. Only about 4,000 of the promised 12,000 came forth to offer their oath. His scouting cousin was murdered. Hussein also was killed wrongfully and died as a martyr. Once Yazid heard the news of Hussein's death, he revealed that his command to his minions was a request to stop Hussein, not to kill him. Islam and the Holy Quran command no sects nor divisions amongst Muslims. The Holy Quran states, and hold firmly to the robe of Allah, all together and do not become divided. Quran 3, 103. The word rope here refers to the Holy Quran. Muslims are avowed to unite under the message of the Holy Quran and the Sunnah. Verily, those who divide their religion and break up into sects, you have no concern in them in the least. Their affairs only with Allah, who then would tell them what they used to do. Quran 6, 159. Followers of the Sunni ideology use the word Sunni not to divide the Ummah, the Islamic community, but to differentiate themselves from certain sects that emerged and developed independently, finding no basis in our religion. After the death of Prophet Muhammad, at the time of the Sahaba, the companions. Conflicts arose between Muslims. As a result, certain groups broke away and gained a different understanding of Islam. Some of these new groups did not accept the Sunnah and Hadith, and some did not believe in predestination, all vital parts of Islam. Due to the existence of these new groups, Sunnis have to characterize and differentiate themselves so people will not misinterpret their mission and beliefs. Sunnis practice Orthodox Islam the way taught by our Prophet peace be upon him and believe in the Holy Quran, Hadith and predestination. Unfortunately, people with evil intentions misuse this term to divide Muslims and spread hate. The most common form of Shi'ism today is known as the Twelver Shi'ism, a sect that believes in the Twelve Divine Imams. Another form of Shi'a is known as the Zaydis who reject the concept of the divine Imam and represent a minority sect of Shi'ism, mostly found in Yemen. Many modern believers of Shi'a today are simply ignorant, blind followers of a false faith. Instead of expressing animosity towards them, we should pray to God and ask Him to guide them on His pure, righteous path.